I'm on fire for Jesus. Like I, I, I don't plan on this dimming out. Like the more and more I learn, the more and more excited I get about things. Greetings, y'all, and welcome to Seek Things Above TV. I'm your host, Lou Chikuni. Before we get started with this video, if you like content like this, please consider subscribing to the channel, liking this channel, liking the video, sharing it, doing all that good stuff, ringing the bell for notifications because it helps with the algorithm, as you already know. So we are going to hop into the story for today. So Kat Von D recently appeared on the Ali Beth Stuckey channel and the Relatable uh, is the name of her channel. Definitely check her out. She got a lot of great content over there. Shout out to her for all the work she's doing. Um, they had a great conversation about Kat Von D's uh, conversion and some of the backlash that she's been receiving for sharing her testimony and for other things. And so we're going to share a few clips and just talk through it briefly. And I will leave the link in the description for y'all to check out the video for yourselves. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this video right here. So, so I posted this post on Instagram where I just took a picture of um, a good chunk of these books that I took from my library. I have a library of like three to 500 books. And so this was a very <laughs> small, like a small amount of books out of that collection that I just wanted to get rid of. Like it, it I don't want to say that they were haunting me, but it's like, I already knew they were there. I have my son who's growing up and is becoming curious. And it's like, um, you know, there were some art books I threw away too that weren't in that picture that were like, eh, I don't know if I want my kid to look at that, you know, yeah. like, um, and, but to me, it was like, I came to this really awesome realization that the, that night that I, that I, um, decided to post that was that like, I don't want these crutches in my life anymore, mm. you know? And that's what I really saw them as is like, okay, like, um, I just want Jesus. And it's a very narrow a narrow road, right? Like, So she talks about her experience of throwing away the books that had to do mostly with like witchcraft stuff. She did mention that she threw away other things, but at the end of the day, the point of it all was that she realized that these things were uh, a crutch to her. And she does go on to explain that a little bit more in the interview, uh, but essentially she understood, man, she understood that there is, that she can't mix things from this world and things with things that are meant to be uh, reflections of her Christian faith uh, together and continue to go on like that. So that to me does show somebody who recognized the importance of this and the reality of it, right? And so looking at this clip and really watching this interview, I don't really have much anything to really question where she's at so much. I mean, we can just question maybe uh, her her maturity level or we can, we can observe that and say, okay, there's probably some things that she's growing in, right? So we can look at that. But you're going to see that as you watch this video that a lot of what she says is solid, man. So let's go on with the next clip over here. When you posted that, you said that you saw those as crutches and all you wanted was was Jesus. So at that point you were a Christian. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So when did that Probably happen? Probably like a, a year before that. A year before that. So let's talk about that a little yeah. bit. How did, how did you become a Christian out of the world of just kind of spiritualism? You have to understand at that time, like, like BLM was going hard and in LA and I was in the middle of it. Like I lived three doors down from the mayor of LA. So yeah. we had Antifa like on our front yard, yeah. you know, after they threatened to like do the Molotov cocktails and stuff like right. that. And like, you know, so we were just like seeing things in real time and, and they were much worse in real life than I think what people even put on TV. And yeah. so, so I was like, man, maybe like, you know, so I started just kind of like reevaluating, kind of going down the list of what I'm doing with my life and like what my perspectives are. And then it got to the part of like my spirituality. And that's where I started really rethinking a lot of things. And so I, um, I think a friend had sent me a sermon from Pastor Jack Hibbs and I, I loved it. Like it really spoke to me and, and like it answered a lot of questions that I had. And so then I started that my, my, my son at the time was like still a baby. So I wasn't going to church, but I would, we would watch like sermons every Sunday. And, um, and so that was kind of like, I just desired more and more and more. And so I just started studying the Bible. And, um, and it was like, I think it was, um, 
it's it's so cool to be able to do it as an adult. You know, I think like I was very lucky that I had parents that were Christian and enforced certain things at, at a time when I couldn't understand things, even though it wasn't as effective. Like I do credit my dad for everything because. I like the fact that she mentions that. And as she talks about it, she's talking about how great it was to be able to then study these things as an adult. She does mention in the interview that even as a teenager, she had read the Bible through like twice. And that's something that, um, honestly, I know believers or professing believers who've been in the faith for a couple years now and haven't actually completed reading through the whole Bible, and that's a whole other story. But I just bring that up to say she had some knowledge of the Word even as a younger person, and then as an adult, she goes through certain things. She had an addiction with um, alcohol. I'm not sure if other substances were in there, but she was definitely an alcoholic, as she uh, admits to in the earlier part of the interview. And through all these circumstances and then observing the world, having her son, um, her husband even getting involved in questioning what's going on, all these things contributed to um, God using these circumstances and things happening in her life to draw her towards actually wanting to study and read and grow for herself. I remember finding myself in very dark moments and like it, intuitively I was praying, Yeah, you know, and it wasn't because um, my dad made me like it was because I he was because because he'd been waiting. That's yeah. all, you know. And so like when you can fall in love and learn as an adult, it's so much more meaningful and real than it is when you're a child just doing it because this is what we do, you know, and this is um, this is how we do it, you mm -hmm. know. So, um, so I mean, I'm like, I'm on fire for Jesus. Like I, I, I don't plan on this dimming out. Like the more and more I learn, the more and more excited I get about things and the more at ease I am about what's happening in this world and what's happening, um, like, uh, in my marriage or in, you know, yeah. in all of it. So, so when we talk about Christ being our rock and our salvation, that is what we're talking about. We're talking about where it's like, you can see the things going around on around you in the world and your circumstances may not be perfect. Everything, you may not even have all the answers for, but you're trusting in the Lord to carry you through and you know, you know that no matter what happens, he has your best interest in mind. You know, like he is working things out in your life that are going to ultimately make you more Christ-like and they are going to bring about the best result that is going to glorify him. I think she gets it, man. And i um, very encouraged by this testimony, very encouraged by uh, a lot of what she had to say over here. Um, I do want to talk about the baptism video a little bit, just yeah. for some people who may have missed that. And sure. we talked about it a little bit in the introduction, but um, you posted this beautiful beautifully artistic baptism video. Is that your actual church? Is yeah. The building. It's beautiful. Thank you. Um, it is beautiful. And actually. like you said, you received, well, you received a lot of um, positivity, you know, po a lot of positivity, Lo but yeah. then you said that you received some criticism and you talked a little bit about the holier than now kind of self-righteous yeah. comments that you got, but specifically what were they criticizing you for? Or was it like, this is not genuine? Yeah. Or so there's a lot of it. There was, I mean, like, <laughs> It went from, well, her hand wasn't like completely submerged into water, so this is fake. Or it, does, oh it doesn't gosh. count. That kind <laughs> of silly. stuff. I've never heard that. Yeah. I've never like heard you have to full, full sub, you have to be fully submerged. But like, you know, I was holding on to Pastor Brian's hands when, you know, and I, I, I weigh 150 pounds. Like he's like an older gentleman. <laughs> like I was like thankful he didn't drop me or yeah. whatever, you know. So, but, and then other people were like, um, she's faking it. This is just for a PR stunt. And uh, right before I went into the water, my, so, so I joined the church choir and, um, I wanted to sing my tribute, this, this song called my tribute and, um, on that day. And so I sang that with my choir and my dad plays the trumpet and, um, he ended up doing a trumpet version of my tribute as, when I was in the back getting ready to go in the water. So I was already crying yeah. 
yeah. before we even went in. And um, wow. and so the whole entire time, you know, I'm listening to Pastor Brian when he's saying, and it, the whole world was disappeared, and I'm in this water with um, with my pastor, and then he calls me a sister in Christ, and I just the whole time I was just fighting tears, you know? And so in the video, I'm doing this, like, you know? And so, and somebody's like, look, she's just laughing the whole time. Like, it's fake. And I was like, man, you know, you're no fun. <laughs> like, I just, like, people, like, what yeah. are you guys? Because I don't have that within me. When I'm, when I'm on Instagram, <laughs> like, I see plenty of stuff that I don't like or that I don't agree with or that I think is silly or... And you just scroll on I just don't care, yeah. you know? What was striking and um, disappointing to me is the fact that she felt uh, really hurt by the criticism she was receiving from certain people who claim to be Christians. And I got to say, man, I mean, honestly, there's some stuff that goes on um, <laughs> in the world of, you know, social media. And this is supposed to be uh, conduct of Christians, man, and it is, a lot of it can be very deplorable, man. There can be behavior that is just straight up where, like, look, we're saying, like, yo, even cats in the world know better than what you're doing right now. They know not to do what you're doing right now or to say the things you're, you're saying right now in such a mean-spirited way and, you know, tear somebody apart, you know what I'm saying, tearing them down rather than really, you know, building them up. And honestly, um, yeah, I, I saw some of the comments. Uh, well, I heard about some of the comments, and I was, uh, you know, saddened by that, man, uh, but not shocked at the same time. Sadly enough, I was not shocked because this is what we're seeing going on. It seems like social media gives people a license to, to, uh, to sin, to sin in the name of being, uh, you know, in the name of being bold even sometimes. People will sin in the name of being bold or sin in the name of, you know, standing on the truth. And there's just no place for that, man. If you really, if you're being honest with yourself, man, and you're looking at God's word, there's no place for that. Like, be firm. Stand on, uh, on you know, God's word. Be unwavering in the truth. But at the same time, speak the truth in love. You know, I, I, I hired a camera guy. You know, I wanted to, to me, this, I do, I've been documenting my life since I was 20. And I, this was one of the most important days of my life. Like, I want to document it just like I would document my wedding, you know, and to share it with, with the world, it was intentional. You know, it's like, I've, um, I mean, there, there's, there's the symbolic gesture of baptism, but there's also a part for me is like a bit of a making amends with, with my followers because um, for so many years I've been putting out a certain message that um, that makes me sad that I was ever even a part of, you know. And so to to like publicly proclaim this was um, was me setting some things right you know, and th this just is for me, you know, it has nothing to do with, um, you know, my church isn't involved in that thought process, you know. So we know that a lot of the, the uh, conversation and the noise really around uh, Kat Von D's baptism video was really what started everybody talking about her conversion and the fact that, you know, you have people on either side of it, right? You have folks saying, hey man, this is a great thing. And then you also have believers uh, or people who claim to be Christians on the other side who were um, really saying that it didn't look real to them, didn't look genuine to them. And there were some other things, like she does talk about her video for her song, Vampires, and um, just her view of, you know, th th this imagery and how to her it's not something that she considers necessarily to be dark. And it's actually interesting when you hear her, you know, take on it. Um, now, as I've said, I think that there's going to be growth for anybody. Obviously, every believer is going to go through uh, growing, uh, growth, growing pains and go through growth over time even if it's not necessarily painful, but it is you getting a deeper understanding of God's word and you turning away from certain things, even stuff that's not necessarily 
uh, false teaching, but you just have a different kind of conviction about uh, certain things. And that's going to happen to us all. And she's on her journey. Obviously, she is um, she's young in the faith. OK, she is young in the faith. And there are some things that, you know, in a few years time, she may not be doing the same things. We can analyze what people are doing. We can analyze baptisms and conversions, but let's not let false conversions that we've seen from celebrities cause us to then be highly suspicious of any celebrity who converts to Christianity and to be highly critical. So we have to be mindful of that because I understand. I understand on one, on one part it is, it might be zeal for the Lord that is guiding us, but we need to check our motives and check our heart in the way that we confront or in the way that we critique or comment on these things because you could really be doing somebody a lot of harm. With all that being said, man, definitely check out this whole interview. It is worth watching. Let me know your thoughts on it when you do get a chance to see it. Um, I think there's a lot more encouraging stuff than discouraging stuff in this interview. And I think that what we ought to be doing is praying for her to continue to grow in her knowledge of the Lord. And yeah, if there are things that we need to point out, we'll point those things out. But let's do it in a manner that is built to that is made to build her up and build up other folks who are watching her uh, because that's another thing she does mention how her testimony has been uh, impacting people who came from the same world that she came from, which is this world of goth and sort of punk rock. And there are, she's now becoming an example of somebody coming out of that and the people reaching out to her uh, because of that. That's all I got for y'all today, man. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend. And if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above not on things that are on earth, all right? God bless y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.